In search of the American dream, 15-year-old Francisco Ibarra left his Mexican village and traveled to Utah to work as a migrant farm laborer. In 1950, he met and married the young Bonnie Bird from Salina, and the couple started a family. When Francisco became a miner, his Kennecott co-workers nicknamed him Mickey Mouse because of his short stature and happy disposition. He was proud of the name and passed part of it on to his firstborn son, Mickey Ibarra. Shortly after Mickey's brother David arrived, Francisco and Bonnie realized they could no longer stay together, and they divorced. Francisco was drafted and sent to Germany. Left with two small sons to raise, wanting the best start in life for them, 17-year-old Bonnie made a heartbreaking and courageous decision. She relinquished custody of the boys to the state of Utah. They were cared for by several foster families, including Cecil and Isla Smith, the same loving foster parents who had raised Bonnie years before. The boys bonded with the Smiths, but stayed in touch with both Francisco and Bonnie. Francisco taught them to remember they would always be family. My father, when he came to visit us, always ended the visit in a ritual, which he put Mickey on one knee and me on the other, and he was always talking to Mickey. And that talk went something like, remember, it is your job, your responsibility, to take care of David, your younger brother. Growing up in Utah was hard for Mickey's brother David. He wanted to go to California to live with Francisco, who by then owned a business in Sacramento. He came in and uh, said to me, is this something you really want to do? And I remember, Mick, I'm going. And he says, well, well David, I don't want to go. I, I, I like you here, but if you're going, I'm going with you. Right away, Mickey, being a five foot six, 145 pound youngster, uh, went right out for the football team. And he ran out on the football field, and these six foot two guys, 200 pounds, were laughing at him. And then one by one, they started to drop. And with no time at all, well, Mickey was a star football player. And like everything that Mickey did, he seemed to pave the way for his younger brother to follow. Mickey graduated from high school in Sacramento as president of his senior class and then served in the U.S. Army in Germany like his father. With help from Cecil and Isla and the GI Bill, he returned to Utah and received a bachelor's degree in political science from Brigham Young University. In 1980, he earned a master's in education from the University of Utah with an emphasis in behavioral disorders. My first job was Spanish Fork, Utah, working in an alternative high school to really try to help at-risk high school students. Mickey got involved with the Utah Education Association. His time as a teacher showed him public service could make a difference. Uh, public service is really about giving back. He gave it his best and rose to membership on the UEA Board of Directors. In 1981, he left Utah for New Mexico to accept the post of Executive Director of the National Education Association's Albuquerque office. In 1984, he was invited to Washington, D.C. to work at NEA headquarters, eventually becoming the NEA's political manager. He took leave to serve as senior advisor to the 1996 Clinton-Gore presidential campaign. During these years, Mickey earned a solid reputation for integrity, commitment, and exceptional people skills. Then in 1997 came a call from President Bill Clinton and Mickey accepted his offer to become assistant to the president and director of intergovernmental affairs. I had the responsibility for serving as the president's liaison with all local and state elected officials, all the mayors, all the governors, and everybody in between. My assistant to the president who deals with all the governors, mayors, and half the headaches in America, Mickey Barra. Mickey's doing a great job. Mickey worked in the White House in a variety of capacities. He co-chaired the White House Task Force on the use of drugs in sports. We've gone out and dealt with a uh, pretty caustic world looking at the International Olympic Committee uh, trying to get cooperation to set up the worldwide anti-doping agency and throughout this period of 18 months of struggle uh, Mickey Abart Abar has been my partner in pulling this off. Mickey also co-chaired the President's Interagency Group for Insular Areas and as Vice Chair of the White House Task Force for the Salt Lake Winter Olympic Games Mickey was instrumental in obtaining a federal land grant for Utah's Olympic Village. Mickey has always been there, always a gentleman, but always hardworking, 
diligent and incredibly competent. Mickey Ibarra has, uh, has seen to it that Utah has not been forgotten. And whenever we've had a problem on the transit side or the Olympics problems or anything else, uh, we could always pick up the phone and call Mickey Ibarra. The Utah boy who looked after his little brother had come a long, long way. Uh, I arrive normally by 7 o'clock. I'd like to be out of here every day by 8, but it's normally 9 or 10. There is nearly every day, I think, uh, a new experience for me. And there are times, clearly, where I, I do need to pinch myself to remind myself that this is really happening. Mickey is proud of his Hispanic heritage. He has worked with Latino organizations across the nation to help them define and achieve their goals. One of the experiences that I've most enjoyed at the White House is getting an opportunity really to work uh, more uh, on a national basis and with local communities, the Hispanic community. Mickey's real strength is uh, in understanding, embracing, and welcoming the diversity of the kind of people that the White House and all of us deal with. The recent change of administration has meant more change for Mickey. Still young, with a brilliant track record and friends all over the country, he has an exciting array of possibilities to choose from and a bright future ahead. For me, my time in the White House is an experience. It's not a career. He is spending more time now with his wife, Frances, and keeping in touch with daughter Lena Marie, a student at Northern Arizona University. And he remains close to his brother, father, and mother. There is not a day goes by that my brother doesn't enter my mind at some portion of the day or that uh, I don't just call him up on his uh, private line to the White House and he always finds the time to talk to his younger brother. Whatever tomorrow brings, one thing is certain. It will find Mickey making new friends, giving of himself, and meeting each day with characteristic energy and love for humanity and a smile on his face for the sheer joy of living. I remain confident that whatever comes next will, will be fun and exciting. But the future has a wonderful way of opening up a lot of opportunities. It's the fact that when you look at Mickey, you understand you're dealing with a person of integrity uh, whose focus is on other people. And I think it's a terrific statement on, on what America is supposed to be like. He has shown himself to be a tremendous credit to his community, to his family, and to his alma mater, the University of Utah. The University of Utah Alumni Association is proud to present the Distinguished Alumnus Award to Mickey Ibarra. I am very grateful to the University of Utah Alumni Association for this wonderful award. The University of Utah really provided me with a gift of education that really, I think, provided a great deal of help to me as a classroom teacher and in my other public service endeavors. I will always be grateful, and I thank you.